Does this bother you? <laughs> Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order at 6.02. Okay, this meeting is currently scheduled to be on site at Fairfax Junior High Cafeteria. The meeting is also available to be witnessed via teleconferencing. Um, the link to the meeting is Zoom dot u s s nine three six two seven two three nine five two seven if a member of the public desires translation for the public meeting and would like to make a public comment in another language please contact the district office 24 hours in advance and arrange arrangements can be made district office number is six six one three six six seven two two one Okay. Mr. Mullen, the new microphone pull a little bit closer to you. That allows for the volume to be streamed into our streaming device so that they can hear you. Okay. Thank you. So number one, if you would join us in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. And the Republic will be stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you for that. I would like an approval uh, of tonight's agenda. I have a first motion by Alma Rios. First motion by Alma Rios. Second. Second by Virginia Lawson. Uh, all in favor? I have I by Alma Rios. Virginia Lawson for the approval of agenda. I can't, I can't hear you. For the approval of the agenda, yes. tonight's agenda, Palmer Mullen, aye, and then Victoria Cornell. Aye. Aye, that's a 4-0. Um, I do notice we have one member, one of our um, board members coming in, so I'll let him get to his seat. Okay. Um, we do have an item um, for public comment procedure. A person, a person wishing to be heard by the board shall first be recognized by the president and shall then proceed to comment as briefly as the subject permits. Individual speakers shall be allowed no more than three minutes to address the board on each agenda are not agenda item. The board president shall not permit any disturbance or will for interruption of board meeting. Persistent disruption by any individual shall be ground for the president to terminate the privilege of addressing the board. The board may remove any disruptive individual. Individuals who disrupt a board meeting may be guilty of violating California Penal Code 403, a misdemeanor. That's going to put us into public comment. The first public comment. First public comment, Tiffany Levinson. Good evening. My name is Tiffany Levinson, and I've had the honor to work for the Fairfax School District as a teacher at Virginia Avenue for the past five years. 
I want to start this public comment by stating that I absolutely love Fairfax School District. I have nothing but love and respect and admiration for everyone within this wonderful district. And we are honored to serve an even more incredible community. This past year has been nothing less than difficult on everyone. We all together as a whole have experienced a worldwide pandemic. This virus has been partial to no one, discriminates nothing, and has allowed us all to experience the vulnerability that COVID-19 has brought to us. To say it's been hard would be an understatement. However, you know what has been so beautiful about this experience? Is working for a district that protected us no matter what who protected their staff, their students, and their community. A district who rallied together, all while other districts struggled, struggled to navigate through these times. We came out on top as one of the only districts in Kern County to start the school year without a hitch. I was honored to be one of the two sixth grade teachers to create the first quarter Canvas courses for our district. Shout out to my partner, Jay-Z, and Michelle, who later joined us in quarter two. In June, when our admin realized that in-person learning would likely not be an option, rather than wait and see, as many districts did, ours took the situations of lemons and made lemonade. We worked over summer tirelessly to create these courses in order to assure our students would be provided a standards-based education that met their needs. While I was making these courses, I was pregnant with my second son. As you can imagine, the pandemic alone was stressful for anyone, but someone who was bringing a new morn into this unknown era, it was terrifying. I was simply scared. On top of that, I was overwhelmed with creating the courses and making sure my students were thought of and cared for as well within these modules. All of this weighed very heavy on my hormonal 38 plus week, knit, 38 plus week pregnant heart and the fear of, un of the unknown had consumed me. So I called Laura Brown. I had, excuse me, I had not had many personal conversations at this point with Laura, but I had gained a lot of trust and respect for her as I had the honor to work alongside her on several occasions as a lead. She may not know this, but that conversation that day made such an impact on my heart. Sorry. I poured out and shared with her my concerns, fears, stresses, both professionally and personally. I'm out of time. We have about 30 seconds left. Okay. She assured me my feelings were valid, that I was doing a great job and not to overwhelm myself. She then shared a story about her twins with me and it really grounded me in that moment. I felt not only heard, but cared for by someone who only knew me from a professional perspective. I share this with you because a great philosopher, Cornell West once said, you can't lead the people if you don't love the people. Laura Brown cares about this district greatly. She has been with us for 21 years. Loyalty like that is not bought. It is not taught. It's within the heart. Laura embodies the district motto, empowering students to succeed. By empowering the staff she serves, she is helping guide the education we provide. I know I do not stand alone when I say the agenda this board has had lately has been upsetting. However, as educators, we teach our students that it's okay to make mistakes. Mistakes are part of our learning process. I too make mistakes, but that is how we learn. It, but it is how we learn from our mistakes and the accountability we hold ourselves to that defines our character. This board the past year has made many, many mistakes that are causing unfortunate impacts on the district, its employees, the community, but first, foremost, and, and, and most importantly, our students. Although many mistakes have been made, this does not mean we cannot, you cannot turn it around. Now is the time to show that you support this district, its employees, community, but again, most importantly, its students. By hiring Laura Brown as our interim to permanent hire superintendent, that is the message you will send, that you too are empowering students to succeed by providing the district what it needs, leaders that will guide us to success. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chris.
it's not in person who's on our call. Okay. Uh, Shannon Jackson. Shannon Jackson is recognized by the president. Okay. All right. I'm good. Can you hear me? Right here? Right. Okay. Short girl. Got to move me down. I'd like to thank the board for letting me speak in regards to item D2 on the agenda, discussion and possible action regarding interim superintendent search process in terms of employment. My name is Shannon Jackson. I am a third grade teacher at Zephyr Lane Elementary. I have been in the district for 10 years and called Virginia Avenue my first home when Laura Brown was principal there. In fact, Laura was on the committee that hired me as a teacher for the Fairfax School District. When I saw this item on the agenda to be discussed, my heart sank for our district at the thought of someone else being our interim superintendent than Laura Brown. I think she would actually be our best choice as our superintendent, but that is not being discussed right now. Laura has been nothing but professional in all her roles with the district and has always been diligent with her job responsibilities. Responsibilities. Laura is the right person for this position and the one that makes the most sense. This year has been a literal, excuse me, crap show for many of us. And whether directly or indirectly, COVID has affected all of our staff and our community. During this time, when many of us were faced with teaching on a completely new platform, Laura was pivotal in running the teams creating Canvas modules over the summer. And as a member of that team, I can attest that she answered every text, call and email promptly and with the information we needed from her. She was patient, understanding and helpful with all of us as we created modules literally from scratch. We were one of the few districts that was ready to begin classes in August, and much of that is owed to Laura. This year has been extreme, extremely hard for everyone, and not allowing Laura to be our interim superintendent for our remaining school year, I think 24 days roughly, would be a huge disservice to our staff and community. As teachers, we strive to bring structure and stability to our students, whether it be in the classroom or on Zoom. As teachers, we also need that stability in the workplace, and this year, we need it more than ever. We all need some stability and normalcy, and Laura brings that to us with her knowledge of our district and her love of our district. She represents what Fairfax means to many of us and offers security to the staff and the community in knowing that she will do what is best for our students and their future. It doesn't make sense at this time of the year to waste time and money on the search and hiring process as someone new for this position. Time that should be spent focusing on summer school, rounds for teachers, and wrapping up the school year. I'm asking all the board members to please stop and truly think about our community and our students when making this decision. Don't let other agendas and issues get in the way of making the right decision for our students and staff. Please think about how you truly feel and what is the best for the district at this time in the school year, which is Laura Brown as our interim superintendent. Thank you for your time. The president uh, recognizes Marissa Wood for public comment. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Good evening, what? Mrs. What? Brown. What? Um, I, I have a point of order. Miss Rios, do you have a point of order? Okay, Miss Rios is recognized for a point of order. Absolutely, thank you. Uh -huh. she, thank you, Miss Rios. She had a point of order. She um, let the minutes reflect that she uh, requested English, right? Is that what that was? Okay, a copy in English. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Wood, you're All right, recognized. thank you, Palmer. Good evening, Mrs. Brown, board members, and Fairfax community members. I speak to you tonight in support of the interim superintendent, Laura Brown. 
Laura has been an employee of the Fairfax School District for 21 years. There has never been a time when her dedication and commitment to the students and staff of this district were in question. When the Fairfax School District, along with most of the districts in Kern County, were transitioning to Aries, we were the only district that implemented both elements of Aries. This was only possible because of the determination and rigorous work Laura Brown put in over the summer to get the entire integrated system running smoothly so that we were able to jump in fully at the start of the year. Every district was in awe and amazed that she was able to do this. I wasn't because I've seen Laura perform acts of magic like this every day. Laura, your intelligence and competence is exceeded only by your compassion and dedication. How dare you diminish 21 years of competent service because you have a personal vendetta against her? How dare you continue to put our students at risk as you carry out these vendettas? We see you and your, not, your machinations to dismantle this administration of our district. You have rid yourselves of Mr. Coleman and are now on to your next target. We see you as you work in concert with one another to put your plans in motion. We see you as you say one thing in public to veil your true intent. I promise you, that I will continue to exercise my First Amendment right to speak out and hold you accountable for your blatant abuse of the power that threatens our precious students. I promise you that I will continue to raise my voice as you ignore the responsibility and integrity you were elected to the board. I promise you that the threat you make to me and my fellow staff members will not stop our fight for our students. Thank you, Victoria and Virginia. We see how hard this is for you to stand by helplessly as the board you serve with continues the assault on our district. We see you and we thank you. Three minutes. Time has Keep fighting finished. the good fight as we stand by firmly behind you. The in time the has that expired. Justice will Ms. be Wood. served. Nancy Park. The board president will now um, ask for Nancy Cox to be recognized. Good evening, Mrs. Brown, board, community. Good to see everybody. Take um, mask off. I can, Ooh, but it's so sparkly. Anyway, I am Nancy Cox, and I started working at Fairfax School District in September of 1992. A lot has happened in the past 28 and a half years. Let me give you my history in the Fairfax District. My first years in Fairfax District were interesting. It seemed like a third of the staff would resign every year, leaving us having to find new employees and principals having to build, train, and build community. I believe I worked for four different principals in my first eight years. That doesn't take into account the superintendents. I'm sorry, um, sorry ma'am. Ms. Cox has the floor. Sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Cox. I believe, um, and that doesn't account for the superintendents that change too. When there is a turnover like that, it always feels like it's difficult to move forward. Fairfax was just a little district on the edge of Bakersfield and had little to be proud of. With hard work and dedication, things have truly changed since then. We have been constantly improving. 
We have seen two beautiful new schools built that our community can be proud of. We have seen academic growth. I know that our district was on the cutting edge of dealing with the pandemic this past year. Shirley Lane has been recognized as an innovative and impactful school by the Kern County Superintendent of Schools. Why would the board want to get in the way of these out wonderful outcomes? Why? I don't understand. I've known Mrs. Lawson for 28 and a half years and her commitment to excellence has never faltered. I have watched Mrs. Coronel as she has pushed this president to put his own interests aside and look to what the community is needing. I'm completely perplexed to what direction the rest of the board is trying to lead us. I come to meetings and I hear the cries from the community for accountability, but there are no answers. Why does it seem that the only thing you want for our district is destruction? It has been amazing the past 16 years to have the sense of continuity in the district. With this continuity, we have grown to be a district that other school districts look for to successful practices. But lately, I see decisions that are undermining our growth as a district. Why would the board treat our administration with such disrespect when they have been so successful? Keeping our sense of direction is very important. Our district has been growing so much. We have had leadership that took challenges head on. Mrs. Brown has been an integral part of that leadership team. Laura has been a leader in our district since she began in 2001. She's always positive and professional. When people come to her with challenges, she seriously considers solutions and listens to ideas. Laura should be our superintendent. Please compensate her appropriately. And let's get on with the business that has made Fairfax a success. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott. The board president will now recognize Maria Hernandez for three minutes. Good evening, board members. Um, I'm just part of the community, and I, I personally, um, I don't know Laura Brown. Um, I don't work with her, but I seen her for 21 years since my daughter started kindergarten back in 2001. Mm -hmm. So I always seen her climb her ladder up, being among people, uh, being respectful to parents. And I just wish she could stay with us as uh, superintendent. And I wish the board members take this opportunity to show us who they really are. If they really care for the community, don't let other people make you vote a certain way. If you don't agree with the vote that is voted, take your time, investigate, follow your heart. Don't just lead for an agenda. You elected to sit here to make decisions that is not only gonna affect the people who works here, but the community and especially the kids. Esta señora ha estado aquí por 21 años y ella empezó como maestra de kinder. Yo la he visto durante todos estos años y ha sido una persona excelente con la comunidad. Y me gustaría que ella siguiera en este puesto. Quiero que se tomen el tiempo de votar con el corazón en la mano, no con la agenda que ciertas personas tienen. Que eso afecta mucho a la comunidad y a los estudiantes. Y me da una sensación de frustración de how can they put up an agenda to have a meeting one week after the other, but when we as a community want a meeting, you guys are not available. Why? Why? I'm, I'm still waiting for answers. As a community member and as a parent, you might don't have to answer to the teachers, but you can, I'm, bold, I'm a bold, voting person. My vote counts. And I represent a lot of parents. I live here in the community, not like so many of you who use other people's address 
to say that you live in the district, but you're really not. That's all I want to say. Ten more seconds. The board president now recognize Pam Padilla for three minutes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. As we are all aware, tonight's meeting is about filling the positions of superintendent, as well as the interim position while a superintendent is hired. I, for one, do not understand the urgency and why a special board meeting was necessary. Our school year will be coming to an end in just over a month. Calling an emergency meeting to unnecessarily rush the selection process is just not wise. We have a very qualified person, Laura Brown, who has the knowledge, expertise, and experience to fill the interim position throughout the process of finding a superintendent. This important decision should not be based on a board member's personal opinion. The amount of emergency meetings called for non-emergency topics is unprecedented with this board. During the COVID pandemic, Laura has been resilient in organizing plans for our school and its students to focus on education, even when the laws were continu continuously changing. Even with only a day's notice, she was able to adhere to the state mandates. She has never swayed from the pressure of, of her current position as assistant superintendent, even though it was a very demanding task. Staff, students, and the community are all focused on graduation, report cards, student honors, and preparing for the close of a challenging year. Laura and all the current admin need their focus to solely be on the students and not wondering who the new person will be and if that person would even know what to do in such a short time frame. In the past, the process of interviewing for the new superintendent was done by a committee of teachers, classified employees, and community members. There should not be any shortcuts taken in this process. Our amazing district and community deserve to have the voice in this matter. This board, this board has tried to silence and shut us down all year. As both an employee and as well as a community member, I would like to request that I be a part of this committee to find a new superintendent. And to you, Alma, you have said over and over and over again, you're here for the community, you're here for the students, you're here for the teachers, you want to do what's best. But up till now, all the community sees is all this negativeness that you can't stand on your own two feet and make your own decisions. Because if you did, we would see you in a different light. Hey, I can address them personally. I'm not attacking her. I'm voicing an opinion. And to you, Jose Tapia, we have not given you the chance to be a board member. We don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. You don't know who I am. All we know is the way you vote and the way you handle situations where the board is concerned. Tonight, you both have the opportunity to have the public who votes for you, the community that votes for you, see you in a three different Three minutes life. is up. Your three minutes is choose up. Choose wisely. I, I'm time, not doing time this to threaten you, but choose wisely. Time, Thank you. Time has expired. We, we call this meeting, let me just uh, clarify, we call this meeting according to uh, our school's legal counsel. So um, please don't attack the board for um, following direction of legal counsel. Thank you. Vicki Garza. Vicki Garza, you're now recognized for three minutes.
On behalf of the district office staff, we would like to give our support to Laura Brown as interim superintendent. Not only does she deserve this job, she has earned it. Mrs. Brown has been with the Fairfax School District for over 21 years and for the past 15 years, she has held the role of administrator. Throughout the pandemic, she has worked tirelessly to ensure our students our students were getting the best possible education and make sure that all resources were available to our students. Past practice within our district and among other districts in town, including most recently Bakersfield City School Districts, has been for the assistant superintendent to be appointed for the interim superintendent during the hiring process. Mrs. Brown has not only proven herself to be competent in the role of super, interim superintendent, she has also gained the confidence of teachers, classified staff, and those who work closely with her in her ability to fill this role. Why waste any more time or district's resources searching for an interim superintendent when the most highly qualified person is sitting right here? Regardless of what happens, we just want to thank you, Laura, for all the hard work you've done for this district and especially for the past year. Thank you. The board president will now recognize Dave Walker for three minutes. So I wonder if you're catching on to the underlying theme here. <laughs> uh, on behalf of KFTA and the other 130 teachers that are waiting their turn to talk about Ms. Brown, uh, we wanna make sure that this board realizes and understands that we full heartedly support Mrs. Brown as the next uh, superintendent and the interim superintendent. Since you folks have been on the board, not you two nice ladies, the other three, uh, you have had pushback from KFTA CSEA, the confidential staff, you've had pushback from the community and you've had pushback from other board members. It's a mess. This is an opportunity for you to do the right thing because if you don't do the right thing, we're all wondering why not? And it must be that you have something up your sleeve that you don't wanna talk about, a personal vendetta. I don't wanna say anything more because that's Excuse okay. Excuse me, I, I like the Dave Walker like has the, the floor okay. and will not be interrupted. He, um, excuse me. Okay, Mrs. Brown, I'm asking you to let him speak without interruption. Thank you. Can you you may continue? May his time reset? Sure. All three minutes. Back to no, where he back no. to where he was at. Okay. No. We know that you know this is the right thing to do, and if you don't do the right thing. We're gonna question you and you think the pushback's been something now, wait until you don't do what you know that you should do. That's not a threat, that's just a promise. I mean, I think back here a month and a half ago when 60% of the board members did not show up for a meeting and then you can't say that was by accident. What would happen if 60% of the teachers didn't show up? I mean, I, I wouldn't wanna say that's what's gonna happen, but there are other things that need to go on with this board besides the nonsense of having a highly qualified person sitting right next to you and not giving her that position. I'll go ahead and give up the rest of my time. Thank you. Now there will be a Comment by Olga Macias, read by Charlie Clark. The board president will recognize for three minutes. Good evening. This letter is on behalf of Olga Macias, CSEA President, Fairfax Chapter 162. To Fairfax School Board and whom it may concern, we, the CSEA elected board, we are all in agreement and would like to address the following items from the April 27th, 2021 board meeting agenda. D1. 
We as stakeholders in the Fairfax School District request CSCA should be included in the hiring of the superintendent of our school district and any actions regarding the search and process. Items D2 and 3, we are in agreement that Laura Brown should continue to serve as acting interim superintendent until the process of hiring a superintendent for Fairfax School District is complete. The hiring of a superintendent is important to our group as we work closely on contract hiring, MOUs, and any concerns that arise from the classified group of employees. Thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Olga Macias, CSCA President, Fairfax Chapter 162. We're gonna we're we're gonna take a five minute recess. So if you guys want to get water or whatever, we're going to take a five minute recess. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nance. <laughs> Thank you. 
The 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 meeting will resume at six four six forty two. Six forty two. The the meeting will resume at correction six forty three. And we are on. So now we are on D personnel number one. Number one is a discussion and possible action regarding superintendent search process. The board will consider and possibly take action on timeline, deadlines, and methods for recruitment. I do have a, a, a message from legal counsel. We're we're talking about schools legal, our our, ma our main council yes. She was um. Closed session is actually going to. Um. Was someone not recognized? Oh, I'm, uh, we, we can go back to public comment. Um, what's your name? Maritza, we're gonna uh, allow Maritza to sure. have three minutes of uh, public comment. I didn't have a paper. I'm sorry about that, Maritza. Okay. I'm a parent for the Virgin, from Virginia Avenue. Um, I'm here you know, to support Ms. Brown. I'm here to support Ms. Brown. I think she will be an amazing superintendent. She's always looked out for the, what's best for our students. I do ask that Mr. Tapia and Ms. Rios take the time to see what the impact of their decision tonight is gonna be. It's our students. They went door to door when they wanted our votes, stating that they were looking for what's the, in the best interest of our students, our kids, our future. I'm here as a concerned parent because I haven't seen that since they've been in office. So I ask that tonight, please do the correct decision. I'm not saying vote for Ms. Brown if you, if you think she's not the person that you want, but do your vote. Let it be your decision, not somebody else's agenda, your decision. You know, there's a lot of parents that we voted you guys in. We are voters. You know, we do have a, a lot of our community as migrant parents and parents that can't vote, but a lot of us do vote. And a lot of us voted you in because you went to our doors knocking, saying that you wanted our vote because your interest, your best interest was our students because you said that they weren't being the priority before. It looks like if they're not the priority now, please let our students be the priority now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for action D1, I'm going to read a statement again from legal counsel. This is the time for the board to discuss the process of appointing a new superintendent. Our board policies call for the board to establish a selection process considering a variety of factors. The district can seek the service of a search consultant to help us coordinate the process. There are private firms that can handle that. The current county superintendent of schools will also handle the process if we want. We, can't, we could ask a search consultant to come and present to the board. We will need to establish deadline and other specifics. If we appoint a search consultant, they will assist us with that. We will need to consider the date by which we expect to have a superintendent in place. 
if there's a board discussion about the process and whether to engage a search consultant, is their motion to move forward with either a private firm or Kern County Superintendent of Schools? Is there a motion to move forward with either a consultant or Kern County Superintendent of Schools? <laughs> So this is an opportunity for the board to have a discussion about the process that they'd want to have for hiring a superintendent. So let's allow them to have that conversation about that process. Thank you. Okay, and so- Ms. Cornell, you can turn on your mic if you'd like to, thank you. So we can hire a search consultant who will bring candidates to us we can also contact Kern County Superintendent of Schools who will allow people to apply and they will uh, bring someone to it. So, okay. so you, I mean, usually here in our district, it's been, it's been the norm to usually, you know, keep it in house and give the opportunity first to the people that we have here. So why can, can we consider that? Um, we we can consider what's laid on the table, which is either we, we have a consultant or we have current county superintendent of schools, which miss which which miss which miss Brown can apply with the current county superintendent of schools for the position or she can be appointed to the position. We, we will, we have to come up with a consideration of some type of hiring. So th is there a motion for any specific time? A, mo a motion for, um, a motion for, oh, okay. There's a motion on the table to, I, to, to look for one using the, Third consultant at Kern County Superintendent of Schools. This is a um. How okay? I have uh, this is a discussion, so we actually will not vote, but we do have a consideration on the floor, which is to fly it. Okay. Is there any other? I I, I would like to I would like to say something. I would like. Vic, Victoria Cornell is recognized. <laughs> Again, I would like to you know. We should we should take our consideration from our community, uh, having a panel, keeping it in house. Let's take that consideration. I, I'm 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 all for that. I'm not interested in. So if the board can can consider that, that would be great. Mr. Mullen, do you need any? Uh guidance for me in terms of the options there. This is Grant Herndon at Schools Legal Service. Grant, you, um, yes, go ahead. So just that, you know, the agenda items that you have, and just as a correction, our office didn't didn't uh, recommend this meeting, but we were asked to give agenda items. Wait. Can you hear me? What's up? Uh, Let's go I'm ahead. Gonna, I'm gonna act this meeting be adjourned. Uh, can I get a motion? First motion. Do I have a second? Second motion. Second motion. Um, of Alma Rios, um, your vote. Aye. One aye. Virginia Lawson. No. No. Palmer Mullen. Aye. Victoria Cornell. No. No. Jose Tapia. Hey. <laughs> Let's let the, please allow the, please allow the board members, please allow the board members some time to make their decisions. Thank you. Audience, can I ask that the, we allow the board members some time to, to think to make a decision? Thank you. Mr. Mullen, if you let me finish my sentence, it might help you going forward just to know what options. I, are. I have I that's on the floor. 
That's a three, two vote. The motion carries.